Yeah, so, um, you know, this industry grew up uh, quite organically from the time of the first banner ad, um, you know, 20 plus years ago. And uh, if you think about the amount of uh, change that's happened in the, you know, in the world, right, in terms of uh, mobile devices, in terms of uh, TVs that are now connected, in terms of uh, digital out of home, uh, when you go to a stadium or uh, you, you know, take a, a bus down the street, um, you know, the transformation that's happened in the world around us in terms of uh, media has been profound. And uh, a lot of the standards uh, that you know we have created as a you know as an industry, um, you know, have been um, uh, rolled out differently in, uh, based on format. Have rolled out you know differently based on device. Uh, different geographies have adopted different uh, you know uh, norms. And there is a need in the industry for uh, rationalization, right? Uh, for uh, rethinking. Um, all of the you know the business terms of trade, the technologies that uh, connect uh, a brand on one side to a consumer uh, on the other through publishers, through agencies, uh, and through all of the uh, you know technologies that uh, you know in turn connect them. And so you know having been doing this uh, now for you know twenty plus years, and, and uh, <clears throat> having sort of grown up you know uh, with the industry, saw the need for, and you, you can hear it. You can hear it as you talk to publishers. You can hear it as you talk to advertisers. Uh, this idea that there's a moment uh, for reinvention is uh, is now. And so uh, we've kind of undertaken to be the catalysts uh, of that change, of the champions of that, and to hopefully usher in a better way uh, to do advertising. Um, so it's been a steady march for us in a lot of ways over the past, you know, five plus years. We've, um, you know, done a lot in terms of uh, working with our suppliers to, you know, Im implement a code of conduct, right, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, taking responsibility for things like fraud, right? We woke up one day and realized that uh, in terms of uh, digital ad fraud, that everybody at a, uh, you know, three or four years ago said it was somebody else's problem. And uh, we made a commitment to you know, our clients to say, look, we're, uh, we are going to uh, take care of the problem, uh, even if the problem is upstream you know, in the exchange or the SSP or the underlying publisher. Uh, but somebody has to take a stand um, and as a result sort of create standing uh, to be able to have conversations about making sure that uh, you know, fraud wasn't being rewarded. Uh, and you know, sort of made that commitment you know, now uh, you know, no, or over two years ago. Uh, we've done a lot um, in the uh, you know, sort of, again, creation of standards in the various you know, IBs uh, you know, with the you know, ANA or DMAs of the world, uh, WFA, et cetera, uh, in order to sort of usher in this, sort of this um, um, uh, kind of more mature, more enterprise grade approach to marketing. I would say what we're doing now, and we alluded to some of this in sort of our accountable and addressable supply chain initiative, uh, is really to find a subset of the industry uh, that's committed to the sort of highest set of ideals um, and would be willing to do uh, bolder things, uh, even disruptive things to their, in a lot of cases, business models, right? So for example, you know, uh, radical transparency to costs. Right, and one of the things that uh, a lot of our, you know, Fortune 500 marketer clients were um, uh, concerned about was, hey, I'm investing a lot of money in my digital supply chain, and uh, for me to scale as a business, I have to keep investing more. And I can see that, you know, more and more people are becoming digital. Uh, the things that, you know, I was, I might have found uh, tolerable when the industry was very small. Uh, I can't afford that tax or that inefficiency anymore, um, and I really need to be able to understand and trust uh, where all of my dollars have gone. And so we've gone out and uh, sort of curated uh, a set of partners uh, that represent, uh, you know, today a subset of the industry who have agreed and have said, look, we are willing to uh, sign up uh, for this full transparency from sort of tip to tail um, as a condition on how you know, we would uh, do business going forward. Uh, you know, commit to addressability, right? To you know, a single view of the customer, et cetera. And uh, finding a set of, the, um, of participants, right? Marketers, agencies, uh, us, uh, you know, SSPs and exchanges, right? Underlying publishers, but having all of those uh, connections made where everybody says, yes, like uh, we want everybody to be evaluated based on the value that they're creating 
and were willing to share the economics of the you know of their business model. That for a lot of marketers uh, is transformative, right? It allows you to kind of look at the whole supply chain, right, and basically say. Um, I am able to evaluate the sort of total cost of ownership, right? Uh, how much I'm putting a dollar in, I'm taking three dollars out, and I understand all of the uh, uh, steps in that process, such that I can fairly evaluate who's doing, you know, who's adding more value than they're uh, extracting, um, and to be able to build sort of a supply chain that feels more durable, more permanent uh, than the transactional one that we've sort of grown up with. If that makes sense. Um, well, first, I don't know that there are challenges. I think they are um, necessary and, dare I say, um, opportunities for the industry to have a direct conversation. Um, you know, I happen to be a, uh, a strong believer in advertising. I mean, it's a, uh, it is a force uh, that moves the global economy. It is the way that people, uh, you know, pay for free content and news, uh, the stuff that, you know, uh, maintains global democracies, right? So it's an incredibly important force. So the, the question is not, um, you know, if advertising uh, digitally, but it's how advertising digitally. And I think we as an industry, um, you know, we've done a lot of work, of course, in sort of self-reg and, you know, a lot of the trade associations have, uh, you know, created and promulgated, you know, standards about what it means to be a good actor in the advertising community. But I think what you've seen in the regulatory environment, both, you know, GDPR in Europe, now CCPA in uh, you know, California in the US, uh, but increasingly sort of worldwide is people are like, look, uh, these devices that we have with us uh, all of the time are incredibly powerful. Uh, advertising itself, as we've seen, is an incredibly, you know, powerful uh, medium to, you know, change people's hearts and minds. And uh, defining the rules by which that uh, happens, right? Both from a uh, best practices, uh, you know, this is what is good advertising, uh, this is what is bad advertising, this is what shouldn't be allowed, right? And then how that actually happens from a data capture, from a data use, from a, uh, you know, uh, uh, application standpoint, those things all need to be defined. And, uh, you know, technology obviously moves extraordinarily quickly. Um, and now I think it's uh, incumbent on you know the industry you know as an industry, but the industry in collaboration with you know citizens, with academics, with government uh, to define what we think uh, the right rules are for how advertising and digital devices work with one another, um, given their importance of advertising and the importance of digital in our lives. Um, and it's just time. It's time that we all um, you know uh, took things that were implicit uh, and made them all you know incredibly explicit. Well, we've been, you know, committed to New Mexico for uh, quite a few years, um, and you know, we've sort of seen the uh, evolution uh, over, you know, called the past, you know, five, uh, you know, five plus, and you know, I think for us, it's a, it's one of the, uh, you know, sort of better conferences that you know we attend globally. Uh, find that the, you know, the quality of the uh, sort of attendees very high. People come very focused. Um, you know, I sort of, uh, you know, think a lot about sort of the trade show model and in, in, uh, in sort of other markets, right? Which this uh, resembles, like literally the physical space of people with sort of, you know, booths and, um, you know, sometimes overly warm conference rooms. Uh, you know, uh, but the activity is frenetic, right? People are going from meeting to meeting, you know, uh, thirty-minute blocks of time, uh, you know, full days and, you know, in a lot of cases, full evenings, and it becomes a really, really effective way to uh, connect with a, you know, broad set of people. People uh, tends to again be you know decision makers and people that are uh, prepared to kind of do work, uh, which is you know uh, if you're if you're into it that's the type of conference that you know sort of we like. Uh, you know content tends to be you know uh, good and uh, the fact that it brings sort of all of Europe together uh, and then increasingly sort of the you know uh, global uh, sort of representation uh, makes it sort of a, a good sort of um, you know. Uh, high activity, uh, potentially a little bit frenetic, uh, you know, three days in the, in the year.